Welcome to our TLC team call tonight, you guys. I'm just gonna get right into it. I don't, oh, the one update I wanted to share with you guys, if you don't know, is that the annual all access pass now has two more bundles. There's a deluxe that comes with Shakeology and Energize and Recover. And then there's also the Mega, which also comes with like a roll, is it a foam roller and a mat or something? Something awesome. Um, so the way I've been using that, I use the same scripts that I have been using, but instead of defaulting to the it's 160, I just send a photo. I can share it with you guys if you don't have it. And everyone so far is going with that middle option, which is kind of cool because then they get energized, we get more commission, and it's awesome. So just wanted to throw that out there in case you missed it. Tonight, we are going to feature six leaders on our team who went to the new leader conference. And the new leader conference is, I mean, for new leaders, it's for new, new one-star diamonds or above, and you only get invited once. You have to get invited, and then that year that you qualify is your invite, and that's it. So it's super exclusive, and when, when you're there, you get tons of tips that all the girls are going to be sharing with us tonight. And it's everything, you guys, from how to attract quality coaches, um, a start and stop doing list, Instagram stories, call to actions, time management, like amazing stuff that they're going to share with us. So our first speaker is Marissa, and I asked everyone to share with me their rank, which is all star diamond. That was just a silly question on my part. But then also one thing that they're proud of and a fun fact. And these fun facts, I'm saying they're straight from their mouth, not mine. <laughs> so Marissa, she's obviously a star diamond rank. She, it, her proud moment is that she's locked in success club for the 43rd month in a row, which is insane. And her fun fact is that she coaches high school volleyball because she can't accept the fact that she's no longer a competitive athlete. <laughs> So Marissa, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> um, okay, so hi, I'm Marissa. For those of you that don't know me, and I'm super excited to give you just a couple little uh, pieces of feedback from the uh, conference we just went to. So the first thing that I wanted to kind of touch on, um, they talked to us about, they called them the increasers. So they kind of um, did a survey of people in the company that earn anywhere from $1,000 to $50,000 a year, um, which is obviously like a big gap, but they wanted to see what are these people doing that are helping them to keep increasing their business. And I actually had made like a nice little graphic and I'm going to put it in um, the TLC group page for you guys. But literally after I finished the graphic, Carl posted it in the one by three by five group. So I was like, seriously, so I'll post it. Mine's just white and pink and his is blue. Um, but basically it was kind of neat because all that these people are doing is exactly what we've been telling you to do or your coaches have been telling you to do or we've been told to do from the very beginning. It's just that they're doing them more consistently, which is what I think Addie is going to talk about a little bit. Um, but some of the stuff that I thought was really, you know, kind of interesting is that most of them said they're only working two to three hours a day but they wrote that they're working two to three focused hours a day. And I think that's where a lot of us struggle is that, yeah, we say that we're working, but are we really working? Are we just scrolling social media? Are we messing with graphics and not really doing anything with them? So I thought that was um, important to think about. Um, they also are averaging about 36 posts a week on social media. So they are very active. They are, I think it said 40% more active on Instagram stories than other people. So they post at least three stories a day. They're starting over five new conversations a day with people. They're inviting over 12 people to learn about the coaching opportunity every week. Um, they are adding at least 10 new followers or friends on Instagram and Facebook every day. And they're using Instagram stories to enroll coaches and customers more now than just messaging, um, which I thought was really cool. And I know Addie is going to touch a little bit about Instagram stories too, but um, that was a huge topic of discussion when we were there. Otherwise, it's like follow the vital behaviors, be authentic, focus your social media around those four to five themes, use your call to actions, connect with people offline. Um, 
the one thing that I liked uh, was kind of two things, but when we're talking about launches of new programs, because I do know there's some new stuff coming out, they kind of hinted about a test group that's going on. Um, but by generating intrigue around these new groups and launches, by like teasing about making an announcement, and then limiting the amount of people that can join your group so it creates a demand. And I know that we saw like a lot of success with this with 80 Day Obsession, at least I did, and I know a lot of the coaches that I talked to did as well. So kind of using those teasers and then making it sound like there's a big demand to join your group. Um, and that's uh, really been helpful for a lot of these people that they call increasers. So I will share, um, like I said, I'll share my little visual in the TLC page, but if you're in that one by three by five group, it's in there as well. Um, another thing that was really helpful for me, I really like to like manage my time and I really like to like have a schedule, but it's nearly impossible for me right now with a toddler and an infant because she doesn't sleep like literally ever. So, um, for me to like sit down and make a daily schedule doesn't make sense. And it just frustrates me because I can never really stick to it. But one of the things that was talked about was making a monthly calendar and a monthly plan, not necessarily to say exactly when you're doing what every single day, but more to just plan out um, the big things that you're doing during the month. So when are you starting your challenge group? And let's say it's on, you know, the 15th and then backtrack seven to 10 days and every day for those seven to 10 days, um, post something in relation to your challenge group. Same thing with the sneak peek, pick a date for your sneak peek, backtrack seven to 10 days. And every one of those days post something, um, in relation to your, uh, sneak peek or the business opportunity call that you're doing. Okay, Sophia, just a minute. Um, and for me, that was more beneficial just because I can't do that specific schedule right now, but I can plan my month like that. And then Melanie, this was Melanie that was sharing this. She also shared a visual basically pre-planning all of those posts. So that way she doesn't have to think about it on the fly. And I know that I'm guilty of doing that just like the night of, oh my God, I need to do a CTA for a challenge group. What am I going to post? Um, so I want to personally get better about posting or prepping these ahead of time. Um, and the other thing that goes along with that that I thought was really cool was that she's been coaching for so long. This is easier for her, but she kind of like tracks her months and looks and sees like, when am I having really high success club numbers and when am I not and why based on the holidays that are going on based on, okay, most of my followers are moms. And so August is when school starts. I'm not going to get a lot of um, attraction at that time and stuff like that. So I thought that was really neat. Something to kind of start doing is plan my month instead of my day and then kind of pay more attention to what kind of success I'm having during which months. Um, and then the last thing, and this really is more of just like a little bit of information, not really, I mean, you can take it as you will. Um, but Melanie also talks about when she's creating her schedule to really make sure that you're scheduling your personal business time and your team time. So like the time you're available for your team. And she said she works her business 80% on her own business and 20% percent helping her team. And I think that's somewhere that a lot of us struggle is we don't really know how much of our attention we should be giving our personally sponsored coaches. Um, and so I thought that was just helpful for me. Like, okay, I don't need to be giving them all of my time, which I feel like sometimes I'm doing because then that's going to take away from my business and growing my business. Um, so I thought that was just kind of cool to hear it from, you know, the top dog, if you will, that 20% of your time is enough for your team as long as you're giving them a good amount of information in that 20%. So those were my three takeaways that I wanted to share with you guys. I love it. I've done that planning all my call to action posts at once before, like on a random Sunday or a slow night, I like created the image and I always have a theme, um, like for whatever my group is or the call to action. And so I just created legit the posts and the content and saved it in my notes. And it was like, the smoothest month ever because you just copy and paste versus like, okay, team call just ended. I should probably do a call to action, <laughs> you know. Exactly. And I know that for like moms, it's probably going to be really helpful to do something like that because like I said, I'm always like, see to my pants, oh my God, what am I going to post? And I need to get the kids to bed. So yeah, I think that's going to be helpful for me. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Marissa. You're welcome. Um, if you guys have any questions too, just comment in the chat and then 
we'll loop around back to them. But next up, we have Addie Yoder. And she is a star diamond rank, of course. Her proud moment is that she's locked in at Success Club for the 38th month in a row, also crazy. And her fun fact is that she has seen all 100 of the AFI, AFI films, which is the American Film Institute. They have like a top 100 movie list. I Googled it and she's seen them all, which is kind of cool. So take it away, Abby. Hi, I'm Addie. If you don't know who I am, it's nice to see you. Um, I'm going to talk about one thing that kind of overlaps with Marissa, but it really resonated with me um, when Melanie talked about her monthly planning and consistency. You know, consistency is something that we hear all the time, like be consistent. And one of the biggest things you can do is be consistent. And so it's like in your head, but it never, like all of the dots didn't connect to me. I thought it meant like work every day but I didn't really think of it like big picture and working every day didn't necessarily mean I was doing the same actions every day. So um, just that planning piece and looking at your month and then doing the same thing every month is kind of like raising kids. Like that's like how my mom of four brain went to it. It's like raising kids. It's like if I do the same thing every month, then people are going to know what to expect and they're going to know like, um, I don't know if you're in the Diamond Dash group, but the girl that's doing videos this week kind of talked about it too. Like, if I run my challenge group on the second Monday of the month, every single month, and I stop inviting to it after it starts, then people are going to, one, know that I'm serious about those deadlines, and they're going to know, okay, well, next month, the first half of the month, I better get my crap together and get in. And just to having those patterns in your consistency really just like almost trains your customers to know what to expect. And I just, I don't know why that was a lightning bolt moment for me because it's totally common sense, but I was like, oh, you know, like consistent as in working every day, yes. And then finding the balance with working and personal time and doing all of that, sure. But looking at it, you know, taking that step back and looking at the month and then the year and doing what Marissa said and including plans for holidays and whatnot just really adds that extra layer. And almost I feel like, like makes you look more professional, you know, like you've got this system and this is how you do it. And so this, you know what I mean? Like people don't have black Friday sales on a random Tuesday. So, you know, it would be like, you know, it makes you look, like you have your crap together, even if you might not. And um, that, you know, just the planning in general, like she said, you know, makes your brain a little bit lighter. So especially if you know you're going to be super busy or you have 52 ball games one evening or whatever, just planning that little bit ahead, you know, makes, again, a seamless transition and post life. So um, the second thing that I wanted to talk about was using Instagram stories. Um, I have been using Instagram stories because it's super fun and an easy way to like allow people to get to know you, but I had not really thought about taking it to the next level. You know, I'd seen people do like call to actions in their Instagram, but I never really like took the time to figure it out. Samantha Holly's really good at it, by the way. Um, but they talked about that a lot. And Bonnie Engel talked a lot about using your Instagram stories for call to actions and even like pulling her pets in and pulling her kids in and showing her personality in those Instagram stories so that you're kind of multitasking, like you're being your regular goofball self or you're not goofball self, however you roll, but also getting your point across and then using that same thing like when you do sneak peeks. So she said that when she runs a sneak peek, she runs it in a group on Facebook and puts all of her regular stuff in this group on Facebook, but then does a very similar thing on Instagram stories where she's showing exactly what she's doing all day long, but constantly throughout the day, posting that call to action. Like if you want in, I'm hosting a group on Facebook. And like she showed a little video of her dog and she was like holding her dog up and talking with her dog. Like, don't you want in on Facebook? And, you know, just cute little goofy stuff like that that, like, caught your attention to make you think, well, maybe I should get in on that fun. She's having a good time. So just really thinking about, like, how you present those things on there to be more fun and interactive and let people really get to know and trust you. And that's what I had. That all kind of overlapped, and it wasn't really three things. 
I love it. And I actually got a message today and I get it quite often that I'll like send an invite or something and the answer might be no, but they still say, but if I ever decide to sign up with you or want more information, I totally want to sign up with you because you're so real or because you're so genuine. And the only way they know that is from my Instagram story. So I love that you can like show your personal self through that. And also in the diamond dash, that was a huge takeaway of mine too, is like, I don't know about you guys, but t taking it a step further into follow-ups, I follow up and I'll be like, the last day to sign up is Monday. And then it's Wednesday. I'm like, hey, you still want in? Friday. You still want in? Next week. Okay, last day for sure is this day, you know? And it's like, they don't take me seriously because I like the whole, no matter, I never have a hard day. I will accept them anytime. So that's definitely one thing I'm going to start doing with my next group is like have a cutoff day and then like, if they want to sign up later, that's fine, but I'm not going to like do any follow-ups beyond that day. Love that. All right. Um, Taylor says, do you ladies run a new group every month? Do you want to answer that, Addy? Um, well, one, they talked about this at NLC. I have done both. Like I typically run my groups on a four week, 30 day kind of cycle. Um, but it does get to be like some work to clean out a group and then start a new one and clean out a group and start a new one. Um, so I've done a couple of different things. I've run a continuous group and that just got too big and out of control. And then you've got all of those people at the bottom of the group that haven't responded to you in six months. And you're like, what am I doing messaging all of these people every Sunday who don't care anymore? So I started doing um, every month again. And then at the end of this last year, I went to every three months. But I think I'm going to go back to every 30 days because everyone consistently in NLC talked about a 30-day group. They all talked about a 30-day group. And some of them have like a lifetime group where they dump people. And some of them have a free group that is like, like a lifetime group, but it was a free group. And then the people that committed to the next level got put in this more exclusive 30 day group. So there's, I kind of am, I'm probably going to go back to, to four weeks, 30 days throws me off because those extra two days at the end just look crooked. And so I like it to be neat and tidy in four weeks. <laughs> and I'm going to jump in real quick. That's one of the things that was actually on that increaser thing. They said they were running at least one challenge group a month the people that were increasing their business every single month or whatever the, the measurement was, but they did say that too. And having that hard date gives you a reason to invite. I mean, it gives you something to say, I Yay. have to invite, get back, invite now because I have this date coming up and if I'm going to stick to my guns, then I've got to invite now. And it kind of gets you to use that muscle. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. So next up, we've got Carly Dunlevy. She is a Star Diamond coach as well. Her proud moment, the last two paychecks she's gotten have been her biggest paychecks, which is awesome. And her fun fact is that she bought a guitar and is teaching herself how to play two songs. Teaching herself. <laughs> That's tempting to do. I forgot the air quotes. <laughs> um, okay, so... My first takeaway was Kim Fitzpatrick, which for those of you who don't know her, she's like a big ball of fire and just listening to her makes you feel confident in yourself. Um, but she was talking about posting and saying, if you add value, you, you will be valued. And I think of all of the people that I follow and all of the people that I consistently look at their stuff that aren't coaches. And there are people who are sharing like their favorite outfits or like their favorite books or their makeup or little tutorials of stuff or like workout videos and things. And we can get in this routine. She was talking about like, okay, here's my shake. Here's a workout selfie. Here's me eating a healthy meal. And it's like at the end of the day, like in the nicest way possible, like people don't really care what you're doing unless it's something that they can put themselves in your shoes without intimidating them. You know what I mean? So like you don't want to seem like this, I'm on this high pedestal and everyone is aspiring to be you, but they're not motivated by you. And I think being able to make yourself like Sam 
and Marissa were saying like raw and relatable so that people, when they are looking at your stuff, they can say where she was before is where I am right now. And that's adding value to someone else's stuff. So like posting workout videos, posting little blurbs of our personal development and saying like, I read this this morning, like even just adding that little thing in there is inspiring. And then saying how you're relating it to your life and something that you've struggled with before and how you've overcome that. Um, so I think just having that idea of, she was saying, putting content out there in your head when you go to type it, like, how is this providing value to someone else? Am I creating a platform for people to be able to feel comfortable enough to reach out to me and to ask questions? Um, so I loved that one. And then let's see, the other one kind of goes off what Marissa was saying with the, in, the increasers, but... I took it in like a, a different way, I guess, as far as it's so easy to feel stuck in your business when you see other people rising or newer coaches, like totally killing it. And you're like, when you look at successful coaches, you're like, okay, they're doing the vital behaviors. Like they're saying, do your invites and do your power hours. And then you ask yourself and you're like, okay, but what are you really doing? Like, is there a secret or like, are you doing something different? Is there like more that you're doing? Um, and it's not that they've coached longer or they have like this secret sauce. It's that they're actually doing these things every single day. And I think just hearing the stats, like based on the surveys from the successful coaches made it so much more simpler in my head, at least that like, there isn't a trick. There isn't a secret. Like they're not better. They're not more successful. They haven't been coaching, you know, seven years ago. So of course they're at the top. It's just, they're showing up and they're doing more, more consistently. And it just makes it so much more simple to get out of your own way and stop second guessing yourself and your confidence and, believing in yourself and just actually doing those things. Um, Cause I know I definitely struggle with that. And then that ties into my last one, which was Jeff Hills. I think he ended it with this one or one of his speeches he ended with, but um, he talked about the book good to great. I don't know who the author was, but, and he talked about confronting the brutal facts of your business. So the reason that these kind of tie in together is like, it's okay if you're not doing the vital behaviors every day. It's okay if you're not doing your workout every day, but being able to recognize those things and notice that and admit to yourself, like, is it the business or is it you? Like, is it Beachbody? Is it everyone else is better at it? Is it like, it just doesn't work for you? Or is it you not showing up? Is it you not actually doing a power hour? Are you scrolling Instagram? or Are you actually talking to people? Um, oh, this is a good one. Am I being busy or productive? I was like, Ooh, that was a dagger. Like that was like, that was hard. Um, so, and they tell you to ask yourself, like, if my coach was doing what I'm doing, would they succeed? And if the answer is no, then you can't expect your coaches to succeed. Um, like it's so easy to play the blame game, but if you can get really raw with yourself, you can actually break out of that rut and start hitting your goals. So those are my three takeaways. That's all I got. I love it. Um, Gretchen, my twin sister, for those of you guys that don't know, who's also a coach, she printed out the Win the Week. Have you guys seen that Power Hour document it's called Win the Week? I am like the queen of saying, like pointing all my new coaches, like fill out this document, but I never do it. And that's something that I'm starting this week is actually printing it out and checking it off. It's like, I know I invite, but I could probably invite more people once I see, holy crap, it's only been 10 people this week or something. Um, and something else, too, that you said. What was the last thing that you were mentioning? Being busy or being productive? I forget. I don't know. If I remember, I'll let you guys know. But I love all those tips. <laughs> Any questions for Carly? Um, Feel free to post it in the chat. Let's see, is Win the Week on the team page? Yeah, I think it's in um, the photo albums of Power Hour. There's like 15 different Power Hours. Win the Week is one of them. All right, who do we have next? I think we have Ashley. Yep, Ashley Robustiano. She is a star diamond rank. Her proud moment is she's locked in successful for the 48th month in a row. 
and she loves lipstick and makeup, but the majority of the time she looks homeless because hashtag mom life. <laughs> Take it away, Ash. It's so true, and I don't know why I'm so nervous right now. My heart is beating. Um, probably because I just got home like five, well, five minutes before the call started and I was freaking out, but okay. So this topic is perfect for me. So, um, I wanted to talk about time management, but also we learned a lot. Um, this was also from Melanie about like balancing our successful life and our personal life. And so I don't know if anyone else on this call, I've been a coach for almost four years now and like the beginning of coaching, I would get into like fights with my husband about being on my phone too much. So I don't know if anyone else can relate to that, whether it's like your family that you live with or your spouse or whoever. Um, he just didn't really understand what I was doing. I was always just kind of on my phone telling him I was working now. Um, and we had one little baby back then. Now we have, uh, I have two boys and I work full time from home with them. And so, um, now I struggle with that balance of being home with my kids while working, being on my phone all the time and finding a schedule that works for me. Like Marissa was saying, it's hard to schedule in things around your children because unless they're in school, which only one of my kids is in school every other day, um, it's not consistent. So it's hard to be consistent with a schedule when your life is not consistent. <laughs> so she, this like, well, I'm pretty sure I cried every speaker that spoke. Like, I think we were crying the whole time. Um, cause everything was just like hit you right here. But when Melanie said this, um, she was talking about having a Google calendar and scheduling in your family time and your business time and you know your team calls all of that stuff she has like pockets of when she does every little thing in her calendar and she talked about how she shares that she can sync it right with her husband's phone she syncs it with her success partner like she lets people around her in her circle know this is my schedule so that if, I, if she's not answering her phone, it's because she set her phone down and she's with her kids and she's mom. So like letting people in to your schedule and sharing all of that when you do have it scheduled, if you're trying to become a little bit more organized, um, because she's, she said this and I wrote it down, you don't have a lack of time, you lack organized, organization and structure. And that is 100% me, right? We all have the same hours in the day. But if we're not a little bit organized, if we don't go into our day knowing from a list, like, I need to do this today, then that's when we sit down to do our power hour. And if you're like me, I have, like, as long as my children nap, which can be not at all, to maybe two hours. So you, if you don't have anything you're working from, then that's when you sit down and you're like, okay, who do I message? Who do I invite? I'm supposed to invite 50 people right now, but I don't know who the hell to talk to type of thing. And so she was talking about that. And, um, that was one of those moments, especially when she said this, and this is when I started to cry because this is my like downside with my children. Oh, sorry. My alarm's going off to eat. ADD obsession problems. Um, she said, your children will remember the two hours of quality time that you give them your full attention more than they will remember six hours of their mom in her phone. And I like lost it. It makes me like emotional right now because I, that's what I do. I sit and it's unintentional, right? We all do it. It's so unintentional, but we feel like we're working when like, I might be responding to some messages, but I'm sitting here on my phone when my kids are begging for my attention and uh, but I'm working, right? I'm trying to balance work from home mom life. And so when she said that, I like, I like, um, turned to Carly, who is my success partner. And I was like, Oh my God, like, I need to do this. I'm going to create a Google calendar. I'm going to sync it with you. You're going to know when I don't answer my phone. It's because I'm leaving it in my bedroom. Like, I'm like, I need to do this for myself and for my business and for my kids. And so, um, on Monday, we got home on Sunday. On Monday, I uh, I did just that, and I um, I worked from a list, and I had a two hour, and I had that same two hour increment that I usually try to accomplish during nap time, and um, 
I got so much done. I actually filled out my business activity tracker. Guys, I've been a coach for almost four years and I tell like what these guys are saying, do what you tell your coaches to do. I tell them to fill out the freaking tracker and I never do it. And so it kept me on track and I've been doing that all week and I've been feeling so great about my business and I feel like I'm moving forward instead of constantly just doing all this busy work of like not actually getting anything done. So I know we hear like all of this stuff that we're sharing with you guys, like we hear it all the time. We hear it over and over and over again, come up with a schedule, be consistent. But I think sometimes you can hear something and not have it click until for some reason that right person and that right moment says it and it just hits you and you're just like, she's right. I need to do that. And so that was my moment for me while I was at the conference when she said that. And it was just that, that moment when she was talking about being in front of your phone. And so, um, so that is one of my top, top takeaways is just do your best. And even if you don't have children, like, um, with your spouse, or even if you're trying to balance just like a social life, like we can make all of this work, but we have to have some sort of schedule, some sort of, you know, we have to prioritize our to-do list. We need to eliminate distractions, set timers. And when it's time to shut off your business, it's time to shut off. Melanie said that she shuts down her business at 3.30 every single day because she gets her boys off the bus. And that's her time to be with her kids. And she has it right big there in her calendar on her Google calendar, family time. And she, her coaches know it. Everyone around her knows it, that she's not going to answer you during this time because this is her time with her family. And so that's okay to not be available all the time, which is something I felt I always needed to be. So that was a big, big takeaway for me. It was just kind of a way to kind of balance everything. Um, and then my last thing, I have so many notes. So I wanted to make sure I didn't miss any top things, but um, so Bonnie was talking about Instagram stories, which Addie had shared. And when she was talking about stories, which, um, I feel like I'm pretty decent at sharing on my Instagram stories. I enjoy it a lot more than posting, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but she was talking about when we are trying to attract new working coaches. I don't know if there's anyone else on this call that feels like they cannot get a coach to work their business to save their life, but that is me. Um, as far as new working coaches and, you know, I feel like not that it's easy. I don't want to say it's easy because everything in this business takes work, but it's easier to sign someone up for a discount and tell them you're going to get 25% off and it's going to be great. Um, and people are like, okay, great. I can cancel anytime. Awesome. That's easier than finding someone who's like, I want to build a business. I want to be like you. I want to show up every single day and I want to earn an, an income and, you know, make a difference. And so she was saying if on these social media platforms that we're using, if we are never, if we are only talking about how you can earn a discount and how you can have accountability in this business and how signing up as a coach is the best accountability ever in your fitness journey, which all of those things are true. But if you only ever share those things, she said, you will only ever attract people that want a discount and people that want accountability. And that was another thing that hit me because I joined this business for accountability um, and I saw the potential in it and I wanted to stick around. But not everyone sees that. A lot of people are like, oh, they, my coach said it's going to be so much fun. I can earn a discount and I can maybe earn some money. You know, and I'm so guilty of that. I'll be talking to people and I'll be like, no, it's so great. All you do is share your journey. You just post on Instagram and you, you know, and then you're going to get paid for it basically. Like that sounds so easy. Like, so why wouldn't anyone do it? But if we don't ever be upfront about what this business actually is, yes, it's, it's not a hard business. I mean, it just takes showing up. Um, then we're never going to have people that want to show up like we want them to show up. So she was saying we need to be upfront about what we do as coaches when we're sharing about the coaching opportunity and a sneak peek or in our posts, like we need to be upfront about that. We need to let people know that this takes really hard work. We're building freedom, like whatever that looks like to you in this business, like that's not easy. You wouldn't go into an interview for like a top company and the you know, whoever's interviewing you say, Oh, you just show up to work and you're going to earn seven figures. Like 
No, you'd literally like, that's not how things work. You have to show up. You got to put in the work, you got to put in the time and the consistency. So we, if we're treating our business like a business, we need to set expectations of these people that we're trying to attract onto our team. Um, and so that was my last takeaway. That was just something that I'm like, oh my gosh, again, so simple, but like we kind of dumb down sometimes what we do because we think we're going to attract more people and we're going to get people to sign up with the, with us. But I mean, I don't know if you guys got your 2017 year in review today email, but I was like, oh my gosh, the retention rate is, was so much worse for me in 2017, which that I'm just like, that year was my growing phase and now it's a new year. But, um, so yeah, so that was very eye opening for me. I love it. And I feel like both of those things, you guys, like any coach I talk to, we always talk about how we're upset, like addicted to our phones. So like that first tip was huge. And another thing with the setting expectations and like showing people like what coaching really is, an easy way to do that is going back to Instagram stories. One thing I do, of course, my planner's in the other room, but I write down what I'm going to do each day, including invites, follow-ups, blah, blah, blah. And I'll talk about it on my Instagram story and show that picture as just a simple way so people know, yeah, I'm inviting people. I'm connecting with people. So it's not just post and get paid, basically. So just one tip there. Next up, we're ending with our two Nicoles. We've got Nicole Faulkner first, and she is obviously a Star Diamond coach. She started coaching the day that she signed up for her own journey. So she signed up as a challenger and coach, and she has hit Success Club every single month since that first month. And this month is her third year of coaching. So happy coach anniversary, Nicole. And her fun fact is that she can... <laughs> Sorry, let me rephrase. Her fun fact is hashtag mom duties have taken over life so she can totally fold a fitted sheet like a pro. <laughs> She's going to do a live video to show us that too. Yeah, I should. <laughs> that is a good live. I know I said to the girls, should I, is this like live material? <laughs> um, okay, so number one, this was my very first Beachbody corporate event and it was sadly in three years and it was amazing. Um, one of the things that I noticed throughout all the speakers, everything, um, you know, all the corporate workers speaking was that they truly are in this with the mission to help save lives and help people. I never got the thought of, you know, you need to bring in more commission or you need to bring in more business for the, you know, for the company or whatever. It was not like that whatsoever. And it, you know, stopped me to thinking, you know, when I see these other companies, um, when these, um, you know, workers or whatever go on to these other companies and they come back and share their takeaway from their corporate events too. I feel like it's immediately, Oh, sign up for more men for this, uh, paycheck or sign up for this bonus or, you know, just something money driven or company goal driven. And I feel like this was not like that whatsoever. And it really just like hit my heart in that, you know, this is such an amazing company to work for. And if you are not sharing this opportunity with everybody, shame on you. Um, so one of the things that stood out to me was, and I think it was in the incre increasers list was you can have a start doing list, but you can also make a stop doing list. And I know a lot of us probably do write down like a list of what we should do each day. And we don't really go as far as, okay, I'm going to do it in this hour and this hour and this hour. Some people probably do, but most probably just get as far as writing down, you know, what I need to tackle that day. But one thing that I, I don't think I have ever done um, is writing a stop doing list. And they explained how this actually has more impact on you and your business and your journey than writing a start doing list. And it totally makes sense. So for, and obviously this would be different for everybody for, but for example, you know, um, you may say, okay, I need to start doing a focus power hour. I need to start scheduling my time. I need to start doing, you know, no matter what tasks each day, but what you could also start doing so that you have time for those things, the things that you need to do is create your stop doing list. So for example, how many times do each of us open Facebook each day and not actually sit there and do focus work? How many times do we find ourselves scrolling through Facebook each day when we're not really doing work? Um, 
you know, and I'll get into my mom life. How many times am I wiping off the counters each day? How many times am I vacuuming each day? Because I have pet hair phobia. <laughs> you know, it's little things like that that you stop doing these things that aren't moving your business forward and start doing the things that will. And I think it's just a matter of how serious you do want success in the business. Obviously, my goals and my tasks that I need to stop doing are going to be different from other people, but it was just really eye-opening to see like, wow, I could really stop doing that and stop doing that and stop doing that. And then there's time for that focus power hour where I keep complaining that I don't have time for it because I am crazy busy with my kids or whatever. Um, so that was one thing. Um, another one was, I feel like I took this away from absolutely every speaker. And like Ashley said, every single one just spoke right to my heart. For all of those that are going next year, take a box of tissues because I swear to God, my sleeves were soaking wet after each speaker. Um, but it was, you could tr truly see how much each person expressed and is able to live as themselves. And so this, this next thing is to really be you. And I kind of mean that in two different ways and that, you know, you, you are the only person that is you. So you have a chance to really, you know, shine as you are. Don't worry about what other people are going to say. Don't worry about what other people are going to think. Don't worry about all the negativity. Just be you. Share who you truly are and share that in, in your posts, in your stories. Um, you know, all of that. That's how you're going to attract the people who are like you. You are going to speak to those people who are like you. And that's ultimately what you want to do. That's how you're going to stand out from the coach next to you. And you, you know, want that too. Don't be in it to help everybody yet not knowing what to share or not knowing what to say or not knowing, you know, how to overcome things. Just simply share you, share what you like, share, um, what you struggle with. I tell this to my team all the time. You know, if you find something that you're struggling with, say you suck at meal planning, own up to it and start sharing that. Okay. Now I'm going to start focusing on meal planning. I'm going to give you guys a meal plan each week. I invite you to, you know, be on my, on this journey with me or whatnot, but truly just be you stop worrying about the other coaches, what they're doing. Um, just like somebody else said, there is no secret sauce. They really are just being consistent of doing the vitals, doing a little bit extra of the vitals and um, just being themselves. And then the other way I take it is that it, and I truly feel this as well. And like I said, I could see it in each of the speakers is it feels so good to be who you are. And there are so many people, myself included, before I started this journey that, you know, I didn't truly know who I was. I didn't know how I wanted to live. I was so focused on a number on the scale. I wanted results, but didn't know what that actually meant to me. You know, you hear from people, your challengers or prospects all the time. I want to lose 10 pounds. Okay. Well, what, what is that going to do for you? Well, now that I have done all of that, I truly am who I want to be. I live each day doing the things that I want to do. And I think you know, you need to rem remind yourself about that when you are chatting with people and offering them that opportunity. And then my last thing is, um, and I think somebody else kind of spoke on this, but I'm going to say it again, is that you cannot ask your coaches and challengers to do what you're not willing to do. And sometimes that's a big kick in the butt that everybody needs, myself included. Um, I kind of spoke about this on my team call last night and, you know, openly admitted that it's February 15th and I have yet, I have not sat down and done a power hour. So should I be asking my children or my coaches to do a power hour? Well, yes, but I can't be upset that they're not if I haven't. Um, same with, you know, if you, I have... Or, and I've been guilty of this in the past too, you know, I didn't do a workout or I didn't drink Shakeology or whatever. Should I ask my challengers to do that if I'm not willing to do it? Absolutely not. And then think of it too, you know, if your coaches or your challengers did exactly what you're doing right now, would they have, would they have success? And sometimes that's a big kick in the butt too, you know, think about what, you know, what do you need to do to be that example for these challengers and these coaches that you are bringing on? So that's all I have. I love it. And I love this stop doing list. Like scrolling is the worst. When I worked full time, I was so much more productive and efficient at Beachbody and had like the biggest growth in my business because now that I coach full time, it's so easy to scroll and it's such a time suck. So I'm definitely going to make 
a stop doing this. All right, guys, last person, we've got Nicole Mastin. She is a star diamond. She's been able to stay at home with her daughter for two full years. And her fun fact, which kind of like is the perfect lead way from what Nicole was just saying, is that this business has given her or has highlighted the person that she really is and finally feels confident enough to be herself, which I love. So take it away, Nicole. I don't know why I'm so nervous. <laughs> if you know me at all, you know that I am a huge talker and I love speaking, but then I get on here and I'm like, holy crap, I'm scared. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Wow. This was really hard to like narrow it down to just one takeaway because I'm telling you what, if you ever have the opportunity to go to this, or even if it's on your mind, like make it a goal to go to this because it completely changed my business. And I mean, it's crazy to say, but I feel like it changed my life because it opened so many just so many opportunities. So um, I kind of wanted to give like a little, because I'm the last one, wake you guys up a bit. Um, how many of you guys are struggling right now with finding coaches? Like I know myself, when I got that report, I was like, wow, like the amount of, you know, coaches that I brought on this year was horrible compared to 2016. So my next thing is how many of you guys are running challenge groups right now? Like how many of you have active challengers going right now? Again, you do, right? So there it is, guys. We're gonna parallel the coach experience with our challenge group. So that's what I'm gonna talk about. And um, Kim Fitzpatrick, I think Carly, we talked about her a bit. She, she's the one that kind of talked about like creating this magic for your challengers. And I absolutely loved it because I'm the type of person that goes into management mode for my coaches. And I love like coaching them once they're on board, but I've never focused in on my challenge groups as much. So when you're looking at like, wow, I'm not onboarding coaches like I'd like to, you have a whole group of potential coaches right in front of you um, that are already doing a lot of what we do as coaches, you know, falling in love with the products. And that's the starting point. So they create the magic and like the way, so her and her husband actually like kind of run their business together. And out of their 28, or excuse me, out of the 30 diamond coaches they have, 28 of them were challengers first. So I found that amazing because right there, you know, it shows you that, hey, you have potentials sitting there right in front of you. So 20 out of 30 people were actually challengers before. So how they do that is they create this magic in their groups. You know, they make it this amazing experience and they get them these results that they can't turn away from. You know, they fall in love with this opportunity. So they start out by doing a welcome email. And I'm sure many of you already do that. Um, if you don't, definitely do that. You're going to give them everything up front. And then from there, they do like a resource guide. And they compiled, like I'm sure it took a lot of time, but they compiled like a 30-page resource guide together. So there's just, you know, personal development book ideas in there. Um, she didn't give us like a ton of what was in there, but um, kind of just showed us a picture. But you could create that to what you feel they need. Um, so give them that resource guide. And then once they're in your group, you're going to champion their inner um, potential. And by doing so, you're building that confidence in them. Because a lot of people, I know myself, when I first started um, coaching, I started as a challenger. And, like, I remember telling Nicole, like, there's no way I can coach. Like, I'm, you know, at the heaviest I ever weighed. Like, you know, I just can't do this. And a lot of people have that same, you know, that misconception that, hey, I have to be at this starting, you know, this weight, or I have to be at my goal in order to be a coach. So you're going to give them that confidence and build that, you know, build that in them. So acknowledge them when they're showing up in your groups, give them that recognition, you know, show them that, hey, like I see you're doing amazing, right? And we all love recognition ourselves. So imagine how good that will feel for them. And then, um, they do this thing where they like track their clients as potential coaches. So they actually have like this whiteboard and they put like the runners, the joggers and the walkers and, um, you know, kind of show them on like this spreadsheet, like, Hey, you know, you're here and I see you showing up every day. Like you're going to be on my team, you know, like, and they kind of like, they push that on them. Um, and then let me see where else. I'm kind of all over the place. <laughs> There's so many awesome tips they gave. Um, another thing they do is weekly Zooms, um, you know, like we do as a team. But now you're building that um, relationship with them. Um, I 
wanted to start implementing that and I don't know why I haven't yet but imagine you know like when we all got to new leader conference you know Ashley Carly all of us Marissa Addie like even if we hadn't met yet I feel like I knew them like I already had that relationship with them from seeing them in this group and you know being on zoom and hearing them talk and stuff so imagine if you could do that for your clients so they have those relationships like that's a good feeling um and then they do weekly Zooms where they have, like, there's physical therapists in their group, maybe nutritionists. Like, use their, um, I guess, their specialties to bring it into your group. So, like, give them that confidence to speak on a Zoom call. Just say you have a physical therapist in your group. Give them the opportunity to, you know, speak on that. Maybe you have a yoga instructor. Get her on there and speak about that. And, um you know, basically, like, give them that confidence to do what you're doing. Call out pill from our child. Okay, oh, yes, there's another thing they do. They do the Ryan Goslin. So I think that's what his name was. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but they do this thing where, like, they call people out when they're not showing up. Um, and shoot, my challengers would probably be calling me out if I started that. But call them out. You know, they go on the search for their challengers, like, hey, you're not showing up right now like we see you you know so call them out um another thing they do that i thought was really cool is they meet people where they're at so she did this really cool image where like she was with like this older lady that she used to work um well she used to work at like a nursing home or something and she had this picture from her wedding where she was literally like reaching her hand out leveled down to this woman meeting her where she was at talk about tear jerker and she said like we're here to serve people that's our job like if you're not providing them a service if you're not leaving them better off when they come in contact with you then you're not doing your job right like that's what we're here for we're not here to sell challenge packs and get success club points so we can advance we are literally here to change people's lives. And so I think that's like what opened my eyes so much is that our challengers are our purpose. You know, we're, I mean, yeah, we're getting our coaches success and all of those fun things too. But ultimately our goal is to leave people better off. So give them that opportunity, meet them where they're at. And so um, they do this challenger like consultation so at the very beginning they get their goals and they literally have a spreadsheet they have their goals they go through like dietary needs they literally know so many things about their clients and I feel like we get that when we're in that first conversation with them when we're getting ready to sell the challenge pack and you're you know kind of meeting them where they're at what are your goals you know are you opposed to a workout like all those things or home workout all of those things but then we kind of just back off so having that consultation that you can keep going back and forth to and you've got it on paper so when you don't see them showing up or maybe they're you know going through a tough time you can go back and say okay well this was your goal that you had you know what can i do to get you there what can we do to get you back on track so having that consultation set up with them um and then something else I loved is they do a personal development book club. So we all know that personal development is a huge, um, you know, aspect of our coaching, you know, our journey. And, you know, it'd be selfish for us not to give that to our challengers. Like a lot of challengers probably don't realize that that could actually change their life too. Like I owe personal development a ton to like, you know, my confidence boost. So like, why wouldn't I offer that to my challengers? So again, they do a book club and what they do is every single month they read a new book. And I think, I believe it's a separate group they run. Like I don't think they do it in their actual challenge group. Um, and so they do that and they read it with them. So they're, you know, it's still like helping them in their business and, um, yeah, they read it with them. So when you guys are questioning, you know, wow, like I just can't find coaches. Like I'm in this threat. Like, what am I doing? Like, where are these people at? Like, look into your challenge groups and you know, they might, I mean, I have challengers now that do not want my coach, like nothing to do with coaching, but I don't know if I've really built that confidence in them yet. So that's what like, this was awesome because it's like, showing you that, hey, your coaches are literally sitting right in front of you and you've got an opportunity to offer them that could completely change your life with what they're already doing now. So that's really all. I mean, that's <laughs> not just time to go off, Nicole. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> that was amazing, Desiree. It was like, you definitely are closing this call off with a bang. Um, loved all of those tips. And if you guys have any last minute questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, I mean, I took away so much from every single person that spoke. I did want to end the call, though, with just letting you guys a little bit know about how to get this trip and how to be invited. And it's actually 
super easy. Well, it's not easy to get to, I shouldn't say that. It's, it's easy requirements to understand. Um, you just need to get to one star diamond. So for those of you guys that don't know what that is, you yourself need to be diamond rank, and then you need to build at least one diamond underneath you. And then also you can win a free room. And I don't know if they did free airfare or not for you guys, but no. Okay, a free room at least for the four, three or four days that you're there um, by earning elite points. And there, there's like four different ways that you can alert, uh, earn elite points. Basically, having your coaches hit success club is the quickest way to earn them. So just basically focus on building that team um, and building more leaders underneath you. And then you can get the invite. You do need to be lock in one star. I think it's by October of 2018 and then you'll get the invite and it'll be next february of 2019 so that event i mean it's still my favorite event and i went to it two years ago and it was like the, definitely the line in the sand that my business started growing like wildfire so definitely an amazing trip to try and earn but that's all i've got for you guys tonight so hopefully you took away some great tips thank you guys for sharing all of the tips that you got from nlc and i'll pop up the recording once it loads. Have a great night, guys.